and spontaneous. In the first place, let us think of classical optics, classical wave optics, now matter. Alright, so uh, there is a game is to The photon is coming, that is incident. Goes, there are two slaves. The photon has two options. It goes either through one or through two. And get goes, uh, then falls on the screen. So classically there are only two options. It can go through S1 or it can go through S1. S1. Okay? Alright? And mod I square would give me the intensity of the total resultant wave. Okay? Total resultant response and would be given by mod I square. Okay? If Shiva is to are real then mod I square is I square. This gives you the square of the intensity, you all know, in your classical wave optics. Correct? And why it happens is because I have a particle in my hand and I throw it. You observe it. What happens? It follows a parabolic tra trajectory. You have determined it in 12 in 11th of first year again and again. That if you throw a particle like that, its trajectory is going to be a parabola. You can determine anything, attitude, velocity, everything about this system. Once you know the initial coordinates, velocity, etc. At your master's level, you no longer talk in terms of velocity, but you talk in terms of movement, coordinates, movement. Once you know it at some time t equal to t1, you can evaluate it at some time t equal to t2, and then you can evaluate everything about the system. Okay? Alright? So, this is the classical picture. So, in this trajectory, the hidden point is that classical physics or classical mechanics is deterministic. Is deterministic. It follows one and only one path. Okay? I start from my home. I start walking to the physics department of the university and I end up in DSK Hall. Okay? I just follow one particular trajectory, one particular path. I am not passing through Patel Chest as well as Morris Nagar both at the same time. I can pass through one of them. Either this or that. Not both at the same time. However, quantum mechanically, I could do that. I could pass through Patel just as well as Morris Nagar both at the same time. So if I consider this example quantum mechanically, the single photon that is coming through the big splitter via 1 and 2 or through two slits, S1 and S2, it could go through via S1, it could go through via S2 or it go through both of them at the same time. This was impossible in this classical This was not possible. Correct? Right? Although there also we had a superposition of the wave functions or the wave force. Here also we have. But then there is a difference. So classical aging is past deterministic. Quantum is probabilistic. So mod square phi has two interpretations. In classical wave optics, it has the interpretation of the intensity of the waves. However, in quantum mechanics, it has a statistical interpretation. Statistical interpretation is probability. Interpretation probability goes to one, probably it goes to two, slit number two. Probably it goes through both of them at the same time. If we were not I would not see any interference on the screen, but I do see interference on the screen. This is possible only and only if the single photon passes through both of them, S1 and S2 at the same time, and then interferes with itself to produce the interference pattern on my screen. Two different kind of photons 
coming from anywhere, from baby or as kind of, they cannot produce, they are not allowed to return. They are different species. It is a single photon. If it goes through both these states, can interfere and can produce interference. Is that clear? Yes? And we get this through the superposition principle through this very simple algebra that we write with first defining these three different physical systems represented by psi 1, psi 2 and psi. Psi is the superposition of psi 1 and psi 2 according to the laws of quantum mechanics, according to the laws of superposition principles of the functions in quantum mechanics which have a statistical or probabilistic interpretation and not determinate interpretation as they do have in the last demo. Alright? Then which I call the psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 or psi I could consider psi n and I could consider the superposition of all of them. So in principle I could I could say that right my this psi could be on this one and should be about the top. So this is okay, just like here you have so, no problem with this superposition, but the interpretation. So, quantum mechanics the superposition is very important. And we call these guys, these objects, as state vectors. And these state vectors are fundamental. They are as fundamental as the Lagrangian. Okay? I, I can construct some wave functions out of, let me say, if I have here state alpha, if I have f prime, this I will have alpha, f prime, if I have p prime, if I have beta here, this I will have, let me call it something else, by beta, and this is. B prime. So I will I will come to explain these things a little bit later. It takes me another couple of minutes. Uh, but to define that this is my wave function in the coordinate space or in the multiplication space, and this is my wave function in the momentum space. You might now start thinking yes, we know something like that. Then you can go from one to the other to the rate on torch. You must have done that from the other the function of the recent space of the momentum space and converting one to the other to the Fourier transform. Correct? You done some Yes, hello. Yes, so so if you are living in familiar about this, now what we are trying to do, we are trying to recast the same knowledge within the framework of the Dirac, which is called the Dirac's notation of bra and head. Okay. So, uh, this, all of the state vectors, they are called head. So, the name is state vector and cat vector, or simply cat. Okay? Okay. So all of them are cat vectors. Now, if I write, this is just the matrix A. And if I take the transposition of this matrix, and if I take the complex transposition of this matrix, then I get something which is called A data, which is the <coughs> adjoint of A. Okay? And so if the, if the elements are complex, then you take the complex conjugation of those elements and the row becomes columns and so on, columns become rows, so it is what you get. What you mean by the transposition of the uh, matrix and complex conjugation of 
that if the two operations taken together is called as permission schedule. Now, as we know, or we would know it shortly, I mean in, in the next few lectures, that I can always associate operators or I can represent operators in terms of matrices. <coughs> Matrix representatives of operators. I will take it up in details. We will do several numerical problems also on that. Okay? And uh, <coughs> if my digit space, they could be real or complex with C will C to C CIs, they could be real or complex. Okay? So no problem. Accordingly, then I would define a new uh, let me call So Hamishan adjoint of psi vector, which is a cat vector, is defined to be a graph. It's a defined name. This is also a straight vector. This is also a straight vector. However, one is a cat vector, one is a graph. One is the Hamishan adjoint of the other. Okay? So this is a new nomenclature. Let me let me remove some of these things here to make the space. And I think we no longer need this, so I could create this. So, What happens if I have C phi and if I take its permission that term, it becomes phi and C that. Okay? So, supposing my phi is a column, okay? Then my phi would be a Right? Of course, with the complex conversations of the okay. So, a column vector, a get vector, if a get vector is a column vector, then it is a row vector. Alright? And I can easily take the product of the two. So, supposing it is this. Uh, one plus i or one minus i, then it would be one plus i, one plus i plus, and no, this one minus, minus and one plus i. Okay? So, this is the column and this is the row, and you can take the product, and this product is called a scalar row. Scalar row. This has a very special importance. And, mechanics, and you can multiply the two and it will come out to a number. Okay. So a scalar product A dot B it just analogous to your two dimensional equivalent space or three dimensional equivalent space that you do in your posterior that the Okay? What is A dot B? A B posterior. It's a number. Okay? Alright? Yes. So such products product of a this is the notation introduced by none other than Mr. Paul Morris Gerard, one of the legendary physicists of the last century. Okay? Uh, I, I narrowly escaped meeting him once I was in Trieste in Italy and he was supposed to uh, go to South Italy via this place called International Center for Theoretical Physics, where the Salam was there. I was a visitor there for a couple of months, and he was a good friend of Salam. So he was going to southern Italy, and he was supposed to pass through ICTC 
in this day, so all the activities were stopped for uh, for him, so that when he comes, he would give him a grand reception, plus informal chat with everybody wanted to really shake hands with him. But for some bad weather or some bad health or something, uh, he played his play or he got his play diverted directly to southern Italy and he escaped uh, landing in this day. And I missed the about lifetime opportunity of meeting him. So I never met him. I'm, he happens to be my my idol of physics, okay. uh, the most important physics of the century, without him, and that physics would collapse. Okay. So, uh, this particular notation is named after the rocks, from that notation, and it's so convenient. You will see, oh, entire quantum mechanics that you did in terms of the field function after all is now so trivial, my God. It's so trivial. The algebra becomes simplified, everything becomes simplified. The, the physical meaning comes out so transparently. That is the duty of it. Otherwise, why would you go into the abstract formulation, if you have a formulation of something? Why would you, why would you like to, to land into troubles? Okay? You land into troubles because you, you want to, for a wider perspective, you want to learn many more things. Right? You want to learn many more things and for that reason you invent some initially looking complicated things but later on they simplify your life. Okay? Correct? So, so that, that's, the, that's the point. Okay? Now, let me, let me, uh, let me tell you if you think about that. So this point I hope is clear and let me come back to giving you the physical significance of the program. Once you know the cat had that, once you know the cat had that, then let me give it to you instead of that. I have just shown you my very simple example. I have taken a, a column matrix on, consisting of two elements and its uh, permission a joint would be a two element program. Yeah. You can very simply multiply this with this and you will be measuring the number. Is this okay? This. Now, uh, you have to be a bit louder. She is saying that rho and rho is the parameter and the parameter. Oh, correct, correct, correct. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I totally agree with you. Uh, this, you see, sometimes the space crunch can put you in trouble. Okay? Sometimes. The space crunch, so one must not be lazy. Once you become lazy and you can to make mistakes, let, let, me, let me do it again. So, if, uh, let us take an example this and let us take an equal. The same may be say, after this, let it, let it do minus, then this would be. Okay, and now try, try, this would be this one and multiply by this one. So what is this? Let us find it. This, this, this is 1 minus iota times 1 plus iota plus this, this, this. Two plus iota into minus iota. And what is this going to be then? Again, it's this such. One minus this, one plus this, maybe one square minus i square plus two square. Uh, minus i square, is that correct? Or not? Yes, sir. So, what is your plus two square? Is, this is four plus one five. And this is plus 1, and this is plus 1. This is 7, but you can work it out if I have made mistakes, okay? Let's not uh, spend too much time on that, but this is how you can do it. So it's a number, okay? So you are very correct. This, this has to come to this side, okay? And this guy has to come to this side. If you need to make a wrong placement, that product may or may not be defined. Okay. All right? So, thank you very much.
Is this okay with everybody now? Yes. Very good. So you get some example. You could take it a, a long go uh, column vector and a according to the row vector, multiply this and so on. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. So now, for example, if this is correct that it is seven, then it's positive definite. If this is positive definite, then this is a vector which I have defined by psi belongs to the so-called Hilbert space. So a Hilbert space is nothing but a Hilbert space is a space that linear complex vector space with the characteristic that all inner products, the scalar products defined in the theory have to be positive definite. If they are not positive definite, then they don't belong to the Hilbert space. Okay? They are ghost states. Ghost states are the states with non-positive definite uh, inner product. Alright? Inner product is a little more general name for a scalar product, but it's the same. So Hilbert space is in particular characterized. There are many, many more properties, but doesn't matter. Uh, they could also be properties of the Hilbert space, but if this vector space has to be a Hilbert space, then the most important condition is that all the inner products have to be positive. So this is this is one more uh, very important crucial point. Uh, what else? Uh, I have too many things to tell and I usually forget some of them. So okay, so you know. And by now, I think it becomes clear to you how to call a state vector. They, they are nothing but analogous to some two vectors, alpha and beta. In a, in a usual, this could be this could be compared with if I have a, if I have a vector gamma equal to vector alpha or. B1 alpha plus B2 beta, okay? If I consider two dimensional Euclidean space, linear vector space, with the vectors alpha and beta, so in a two dimensional Euclidean space, alpha and beta are the fundamental vectors, and gamma is the vector sum of the dimensions. Alright. Here, I mean, on the same analogy, uh, this vector state gamma, which is a state vector, in some c times c1 times k vector alpha, c2 times beta. So now uh, you 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 can find take this analogy. I will call it a state vector. But the state vector is more general than a character. So both of them are state vectors. Okay. And a cat vector represents the physical state of the system. And bra vector, its bra vector is a similar image. So it is the Hamilton joint of the cat. Okay. And then you could, you could do many, many things with these things. And then you could start realizing that when I, when I have such a thing, that this is nothing but a similar product of the cat and state and alpha. Which can eventually become a big function. So I suppose, and sorry, when I come closer to this, it can be can, can be uh, uh, right. So and here, as you know, all those considerations would go to here in the probabilistic interpretation of this uh, this uh, body square of psi would be that times dqx would be the probability of finding a particle within the one Okay. If it's a one-dimensional system, then mod of psi square into dx is the probability of finding the particle in the range x and x plus dx. So all those things they would hold true. Your entire machinery, all concepts of quantum mechanics that you have learned prior to your master's course, 
we could continue to hold true. Nothing would be violated. Everything would be a subset of our present generation. So this is a bigger set of ideas, concepts and mathematical machinery. And whatever we have learned prior to this would be a subset of what we are doing now. Okay? There would be perfect consistency. There would be no inconsistency. There would be no violations of any kind. Is that okay? Is that fine? Yes, sir. So uh, gradually it comes to uh, quarter past uh, one, and two people may be getting hungry. Yes, and here comes nine o'clock. So I can call it a day. I can conclude my talk, and I extend my thanks to all of you for being with me for this time and for hearing me all through my lecture. Please, that's my humble request. You see, uh, if the thing is really uh, in such kind of nature that you need to explain or uh, to point out, the, sometimes it's easier you just come here on the board, uh, pick up a job, I do not mind that, okay? And say, oh, sir, you made a slip. This side by side would be a one and two days to be interchange. This will be fine. Okay? Uh, instead of a long discussion and I you are addressing something different, I am trying to understand something different and it can unnecessarily waste our time and can sometimes divert me from my from my and I throw of conversation. That's it. Okay. But I welcome all your questions. You can you can ask any just not a problem. After any answer, okay. So, thank you once again. Thank you very much. Oh, books, 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 books. Uh, Modern quantum mechanics by J. J. Sakurai. My very favorite book, J. J. Sakurai, Modern quantum mechanics. Uh, also, uh, uh, there is one book uh, on quantum mechanics by Sakurai. S and there is yet another book, S and Mustaf, quantum mechanics by S and Mustaf. He was my teacher here in this department, one of the great physicists. Okay, he has a book on classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. Irrespective of which teacher is teaching you, you must read these two books for this subject because he taught these things quite a lot here in this department and he was one of the great teachers and great physicists. So these three books are the two, Matkoi Tanuji, Matkakar, Matkakar, Masiya, see plenty, almost more than 20 books written by almost no legend uh, of theoretical physics and in Lindbergh. They have been the founding fathers of theoretical physics. So, but these three books should do. Uh, but on the top of all these books, you have to remember Mr. DSK. And then you can understand what I mean. So, all the best. Thank you.